I keep seeing it in lots of products, but why and what does it actually do? You sell it in some washing up liquid, you sell it in kind of a bathroom cleaner, and then it's also in throat lozenges. If I can find eucalyptus in hand wash, how come I can find it in honey? Is it just for there for the sort of the smell? I would imagine a lot of it would be to do with uh, the fragrance of it. Yeah. Why is it in chewing gum? What's it add? I think it's a flavour. So is it like a type of mint then? It is a type of mint. It's a soother and it's a, it's a, it's a bit of a decongestion as well. See, because I was confused by the fact that I could eat it but then also clean with it. I know, that is a bit confusing. To get to the bottom of this, I'm heading down under to eucalyptus land. I'm going to the Tidbin Billa Nature Reserve, 30 miles southwest of Canberra. We're on a dirt track, driving deep into the middle of nowhere. Full on Australian bush. How are you doing? Oh, great. G'day. Even better for seeing this. Wonderful. Guide Michelle Vernon has agreed to take me on a trek into the ancient forest. So that's all eucalyptus? All of that's eucalyptus. There are over 800 different types of species of eucalypts. Both indigenous Australians and settlers have harvested eucalyptus oil for centuries, and humans aren't the only ones here. Oh, hold on. What have we got? Is it something on the left there? Is that a koala? Yeah. Just beautiful. They are just real life teddy bears. <laughs> So what's he doing up there? He's eating, of course. Koalas spend a whopping three hours a day eating and around 20 hours a day sleeping because their favorite food, fibrous eucalyptus, is tricky to break down, taking a lot of energy to do so. And there's another reason it's only popular amongst koalas. The oils are actually a defense mechanism for the plants themselves. So it's a defense against insects, bacteria and fungi that might try and attack the tree, but also against the herbivores. And they're actually poisonous for humans. So I really shouldn't take no, no, a lemon. No. Eucalyptus oil can cause nausea and vomiting, can lead to comas, and in rare cases, can even be fatal. So how does he get away with it up there? Well, koalas have a special digestive system where they've got an amazing amount of bacteria that's able to break down the toxin. This special bacteria is passed from mother to baby in a special substance called PAP. It's a mixture of the bacteria, a little bit of faeces, and it helps protect him with all the bacteria, so he's then able to, at six months, eat the eucalyptus leaves. So this little guy, if he hadn't had six months on PAP, he couldn't be nibbling on a eucalyptus leaf now. That's exactly correct. Special little creatures, aren't they? Yeah. So, lacking that special koala bear bacteria, eucalyptus oil is toxic to humans. So how is it an ingredient in throat sweets, chewing gum and honey? To try and find an answer, I'm heading 300 kilometres deeper into the bush to meet eucalyptus farmer Andrew Cumming. Hi, Andrew. Hi, how are you going? I'm glad I found you, cos we're in the middle of nowhere, aren't we? Yeah, no, good lonely spot. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew farms 6,000 acres of Blue Mallee eucalyptus, a variety that produces lots of oil. It's very thick, isn't it? Yeah, and if you look up at the light, you'll see that it has a multitude of little oil cells, all full of oil. Gosh, are those little pockets oh, of oil? It's amazing, isn't it? Yeah, that is loaded. It is loaded. With <laughs> eucalyptus oil. Andrew and his team harvest thousands of trees a day by chopping them off at their roots and shredding the leaves and branches. But eucalyptus are fast growers. These stumps will regrow and be ready to harvest again in around 18 months' time. So what is it that you're after in this eucalyptus? So what we're trying to get out of that eucalyptus leaf is the eucalyptol, which is the main ingredient for the medicines that we use. So eucalyptol is what gives eucalyptus its medicinal property? That's right. The first stage in extracting eucalyptol, the all-important ingredient in our throat lozenges, is to get the eucalyptus oil out of the leaves. So that's the leaf that we harvested up in the plantation. The leaves are processed in the vessels they were harvested in. By locking a lid on top, Andrew turns it into something resembling a giant pressure cooker. All connected up, ready for you to put the steam into the leaf. Right. Steam 
enters the vessel and explodes the oil cells in the leaves. The vapor is collected and cooled, and the result is a crude eucalyptus oil. Whoa! That hits you, doesn't it? Gosh, look at that. Isn't it a lovely color? Really good for the nostrils. I wouldn't recommend drinking this one because even this much would upset a koala. Really? I'm sure it would, yes. Yeah. So how much is OK to consume? Because this stuff's toxic, isn't it? An old traditional Australian medicine is three drops of eucalyptus oil in a teaspoon of brown sugar. Very good for the cold. Any more than that, then I wouldn't recommend it. That definitely packs a punch. <laughs> it certainly does. Although the refining process removes most of the toxins, this still has potential dangers, so only traces of eucalyptol are added to our throat lozenges and honey. Mm -hmm.